What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp free tutorial. So in this video, we're gonna continue our series on modeling a floor plan inside of SketchUp free um, by talking about how to start adding furniture, cabinets, other things like that. So we'll model out a cabinet and then we'll also talk about how to get free models to bring into your scene so that you don't have to model more complex things like beds or faucets or other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So let's start off by modeling a cabinet. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to create a simple rectangle. So I'm just going to tap the R key and I'm going to tap the up arrow key to lock my rectangle to the blue axis. Then I'm going to single click, I'm going to move my mouse, and then I'm going to click again. And so you can also, if you want this to be more specific, you can type in values. So you could type in like 10 inches, comma, 18 inches or something like that. You could also, once you draw this, if you want to resize it, you could move this over. So if I wanted to move this another six inches, I could do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to push pull this up in order to rough out our cabinet box. So I'm going to push pull this up and we're going to say this is going to be maybe like, uh, we'll say 32 inches high. So for those of you that are checking my dimensions, I did not go look at what the actual size of a cabinet is. And so the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little recess in here. So I'm just going to draw a line up, maybe like two inches. Then I'll draw a line across right here. And I'm just going to push pull this back a little bit. So usually you get a little bit of an overhang here. So kind of a kick space or something like that. So we'll just move this back maybe an inch. And so what I've done is I've roughed out my basic cabinet shape. And from here, you can kind of decide how detailed you want to get. So for example, if I wanted to, I could uh, triple click on this and I could put it in a group and then I could model my door separately. So alternatively, you could also use the push pull tool to extrude this out in order to create a door or um, you could really do kind of whatever you want with this. So in this situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle across this face. I'm gonna push pull it out a little bit. So we'll say that this is maybe like three quarters of an inch thick. So I'll do a 0.75 and hit the inner key. And then I'm just going to offset this in a little bit, maybe like an inch. So tap the F key and then mouse over this face and single click. Then I'm gonna mouse over this again and I'm gonna create maybe like a half inch space right here. So what that's gonna allow me to do is that gives me a little recess that I can push backwards into this face so that I can add a little bit of detail in here. And we'll just say that the recess is gonna go back maybe halfway, so we'll call it 3 eighths of an inch. So then I'm gonna triple click on that and I'm gonna make that a group. And so I have a door and I have a cabinet. And again, you could just model the door inside your cabinet if you wanted to do that. But then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model out my countertop. And so I'll just use the line tool. I'll just draw a line out along this green axis. So maybe to about this length. Um, and I'll just go ahead and call it two foot, two inches. I'll draw a line across and then you can just use the rectangle tool in order to close this in. Then you can push pull this up to whatever the thickness of your countertop is gonna be. So maybe 0.75 again. And I'm also gonna bevel off this corner. So I'm just gonna draw a line right here. And then I'm gonna use the push pull tool. So I'm gonna tap P, single click on this face and move my mouse across and then click on this line right here. And that's gonna remove my extra. So what that gives me is that gives me my countertop that's gonna sit on top of my cabinet. I'm just gonna triple click on that to select it. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make that a group. Now, I wanna take all three of these, the door, the body, and the counter. I'm just gonna do a shift click and I'm just gonna right click on these and I'm gonna make these a component. And the reason we're making these a component, and we'll just call this base narrow, cabinet. Click on OK. The reason we're making that a component is because we're going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to tap the M key, click on this corner, and then move my mouse. I'm going to tap the control key to enter copy mode. And so what that means is that means I now have two copies of this object or two instances. Well, because we created these as a component, that means if I come in here and add a material, so like this wood veneer, for example, and I'm just going to apply that to my front and my side. Then we'll add one of these synthetic surfaces to our top. We'll notice how when I made the change, 
in here. This change was reflected from one component to the other. And so that's because this is a component. And so any change I make inside of one instance of the component is going to be reflected across this other one right here. And so that's how you could model these out yourself. You can also add models from the 3D warehouse. And so you can do that by coming over your toolbar on the right hand side and clicking on this little box right here. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to access the 3D warehouse, which so the 3D warehouse is SketchUp's free repository of models. So you can upload models to this. You can also download models from here. And so let's say, for example, that we wanted to add a range. So we'll type in range hit the enter key, you can see how you can find models like this range right here. So one thing you need to be aware of when you're bringing things in to the 3D warehouse is you need to click on them and you need to look at the statistics in here. So if you were to open this up and this was like a 20 megabyte million polygon model, you might want to think about downloading something else. And so the reason for that is because if there's a ton of polygons in here, if they're super big, it's really going to slow down your model. So just make sure you check this um, before you start bringing things in and uh, make sure that you're not downloading giant models into your model because this can make everything really slow. But for this one, we can go ahead and we can download this and place it in our model just by clicking on the button for download. And then once we do that, we just move our mouse and place this. And so a lot of the time you're going to have to move these around. So I'm going to move this down on the blue axis. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. So just with the move tool active, you can click on these little crosses right here in order to rotate things. And I'm just going to flip this around and put it in place. So I'm just going to use the move tool, move this back right here. And so ideally, if you're modeling for real life, you want to find models that are to actual dimensions. In this case, I'm going to cheat just a little bit and I'm just going to scale this down so that these are the same height. Um, you got to be a little bit careful with that because you can get some distortion and some other things in here. But for what I'm doing right here, I think that's going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this back little bit too. Again, don't do that if you're actually modeling to real world dimensions. Find something that's actually realistic. But we can use this to download whatever we want. So let's say we wanted a refrigerator. You could type in refrigerator. Notice the statistics on this are really good as well. So we're just going to download this, drop it into our model. We'll rotate that and put it in place as well. And notice how I'm using inferencing in order to do this. So I'm moving it along the red axis and then the green axis. And so I never move along multiple axes at once unless I'm inferencing like a point to a point. Um, I prefer to move things left, then right, then up or something like that. So along one axis at a time, that allows you to be more precise with your movements. And so based on this, you can use this in order to detail out your entire model. So let's say that you wanted to add like a bed right here. Let's go to your 3D warehouse, type in bed. And notice that you can sort these by relevance or by popularity. So I can find a more realistic bed if I want to like this one. Um, this one ought to be fine, so we'll go ahead and we'll bring this in. And so this is a good time to talk about this. Sometimes some of the models that are in the 3D warehouse aren't modeled the real scale. So notice how when I brought this in, it's bigger than my entire house, right? So what we need to do is we need to use the scale tool in order to size that down. So I'm just going to tap the S key, single click on this corner, and I'll move my mouse so that this is down some. And sometimes I just type in a value like 0.1 and sometimes you might need to do this over and over again until you can get it to the proper scale. So that is something to be aware of is a lot of these models in the 3D warehouse have not been modeled to scale and you're going to have to do a little bit of fixing in order to bring them in your scenes. But fixing these models is going to be a lot faster than going through and modeling these things yourself. So one other thing I might recommend, because a lot of your 3D warehouse stuff, again, can get kind of heavy, so I would recommend putting all of that in a group like this. So I'm just going to do a shift click. I'm going to make that a group, or I would recommend tagging that group so that you can turn it on and off. So the way that you would do that is we would use the tags section right here. We're going to add a tag for furniture. 
So in this situation, we're just going to label this tab furniture. And then we're going to select our group and go up to our, into our entity info. And we're going to put that on the furniture tag. So what that means is that means that now we can toggle this furniture on and off just like this. And you can see what tag an item has just by clicking on it then going into the entity info and looking at the tag. So um, because the furniture can get heavy, it's really a good idea to set this up this way um, because your model will run a lot faster when you turn that stuff off. So I usually turn this off um, once I've added everything until I really need it and then I'll turn it back on. So in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about how to export different things from our model, like different views and other things like that. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.